They've been called neurotic, sex-frustrated viragos, and they scornfully term that the Big Bang Theory. Perhaps the anti-male extremists among them could spoil a good civil rights case. But right now the hand that rocks the cradle is rocking the boat. Whether they're marching towards a brave new world or some sterile, loveless 1984, we may remember 1970 as the year it really began to happen. Dr. Patricia Doddridge of Macquarie University. Well, first of all, we have discrimination in the area where there is not equal pay for equal work, and the arguments for and against that are so well known, I don't feel I need to go into them. The next area which is not so well known or so much talked about is in, uh, the fact that barriers exist to females in entering occupations for which they are professionally qualified. An example of this which came to my attention last month was that 54 out of 140 organisations who were looking for graduates for employment were refusing to interview female graduates. That is, they were only interested in interviewing or employing male graduates. Now, certainly there's some rationalisations of this that are normally advanced. One is that in certain areas it's most unlikely females would want to seek occupation or have the professional qualifications that is fields such as engineering and geology. But uh, then we simply say, well, why advertise for men only if you feel you're only going to get men anyway? Or alternatively, there may just be one or two professionally qualified women in those fields these days who certainly have the right to tackle the job. The other kind of argument advanced is normally, well, women aren't interested in jobs. They're going to drop out. They're going to get married, have children anyway. And here, I just return to my original argument and say, well, why shouldn't they? They're doing two jobs after all, not one. They're running a home, raising a family, trying to cope with a full-time job. If you have a 40-hour-a-week job, they have an 80-hour one. If you're a business executive with your fabulous 80-hour-a-week, they'll have 120-hour-a-week. And it's simply, uh, here we have a system which is operating to stop women being able to hold full-time jobs because of their other commitment and two, uh, certainly dampen down their desire very much ever to get to top positions. And the remedy to this is not to stop employing them because they drop out, but to provide them with conditions on which they can work on equal terms with males. But behind some of the way out gestures lie very real grievances. Not least in Australia, where some women still don't have the basic human right of equal pay for equal work. One third of Australia's five and a half million workforce are women. 60% of those are married women, which doesn't mean they're liberated. It could mean that they work 100 hours a week in two jobs, one underpaid and the other at home not paid at all. Women complain they're last hired, least paid, first fired and seldom promoted. They're heavily overrepresented in lesser jobs like stenography and counter sales. Heavily underrepresented in all professions except teaching and nursing. And virtually unrepresented in management and all levels of politics and government. The reason, they say, is not lack of talent, but lack of encouragement and opportunity. In other words, discrimination. 